Hey YouTube, it's Wes, hope you guys are doing great. In today's video, we're gonna talk about three amazing new technology developments coming to Cosmos that's going to make it a household name in the world of crypto in 2022. See, a lot of people are still super enamored with Solana, with Polkadot, both great and innovative projects, by the way, but have still not come into the Cosmos ecosystem. Even though Cosmos is the number 20 most popular by market cap or largest, I should say, crypto that's out there, I find that the regular folks that just invest in crypto and don't know a ton about it have no idea what Cosmos is. We're going to fix some of that today. We're going to talk high level about what Cosmos is, why it's blowing up, why I have been completely enamored by it, and some of the amazing things that are happening in 2022 that you need to know about. Now, if you don't know, I'm not a moon pumper. My name is Wes Spencer. I am a technology investor. I'm an innovator. And I took a whole week off from crypto because my new company is getting ready to come out. I'm super excited about it. It actually has nothing or I should say very little to do with crypto, but it's something that I'm really passionate about. And so as a not full-time YouTuber, sometimes I take breaks. And I think the advantage of that for you is I'm not a moon pumper. I don't need YouTube for the ad revenue. It's nice to have but I don't need it for sponsorships. I don't need it to buy bread. And so I have no need to go pump projects that literally have nothing to do with anything other than me making some money. I'm not one of those moon pumpers. I cover the things that I'm interested in because I'm passionate about this and passionate about you guys. So as we jump in, would you hit like, would you hit subscribe? Would you share this with a friend, hit the bell icon, all those big things that do go a really long way. Cause really that's my only ask. Okay. More on Cosmos in just a minute. All right, friends, so Cosmos, right? If you're someone that saw this video come across as a thumbnail in your YouTube feed and you're all in on Cosmos, this video may not be for you as much. You may be somebody that's like, I already know all this. Why are you saying all this stuff, Wes? But here's the reality. Most people are not like you. They're new to Cosmos. They might have heard of it, but have no idea why it is such a growing and trending crypto and why it's doing all the right things. I really shouldn't even call it a crypto. I should call it a project, which we'll see in just a minute. So this is not designed for you. This is designed for the people that don't know anything about Cosmos and want to learn more. So if we take a peek at it just here on CoinMarketCap, we can see some interesting things, right? We do know, like I said, it's ranked number 20 in terms of uh, market cap. It's at $28 as of today's video. It's at 8 billion, and we don't know what its fully diluted market cap is, which we may cover some of that later. But just know it's been doing really well, especially in this wild, wild market. It's, it's been doing great. Even today, it's really trended up over quite a bit, lows of around $25, all the way up to uh, about 28 right now. And if we, if we stretch this out and we look at a one month view, Notice it's had some highs and lows. It's taken some kicks just like all other projects have. But over time, really over like the, the last, you know, looking at the last three months, the last quarter, it's done really well. It's trended differently than a lot of other cryptos. And so that may cause you to ask, well, why is that? Like, why is Atom, the, the native token and Cosmos as a whole doing so well? What, what's, what's its trick? What's the secret sauce in it where everything else hasn't done so well? Well, I think it's a lot of things. I think it's some super cool technology. I think there's a lot of interest growing in Cosmos that people are just waking up to its innovation. And I also think when you make the right moves in technology, sometimes you can circumvent what the market is doing as a whole. And we're going to see all that kind of come into play today. So I'm going to go back to this and just a couple news articles that'll just kind of strike you. So this came out last week. Cosmos token surges 8% amid airdrops, Polkadot Bridge, which is the bridge into the Polkadot ecosystem to make sure we have interoperability there. That's good stuff, right? Uh, we Many of you probably don't even know what airdrops are. I'm going to cover that just slightly today, but if you're interested in knowing more about airdrops, which are super cool, I'll cover that in a future video. You guys just need to let me know. Also, this article came across as well from CNBC. Cosmos's Atom token rises amid weak crypto market. Here's why it's def uh, defying the trend. Now, this one's even older. This is a couple weeks ago, January 11th, but they jump into some of the new things that you know they think are causing Adam to do so well as a project. And so I think the best way for us to start before we even talk about what some of those things are is let's just make sure we're level set. What is Cosmos? So again, think of Cosmos while it is a, a, a token called Adam that powers everything. It's much more than that, right? It's not just like I'm buying the Ethereum token for Ethereum. 
you're actually getting involved in a community and you're getting involved in a project that believes interoperability is the key to the future. And I've talked about this lots and lots and lots on my channel. You guys know this. I'm a big believer when it comes to innovation that one of the things that needs to happen to really kick it off and become a powerful catalyst is to make sure that as one person or group is innovating in one area, that they can seize on the benefits that others are using as well so they can all mutually benefit. This is called symbiosis. And it, a lot of times in crypto, we don't see a lot of symbiosis. On the investor side of the house, people think, well, which blockchain is going to be the best and rule them all? We shouldn't think that way. On the developer side of the house, we sometimes think, well, they're doing something cool. That's a threat to me. I want to go build that too. When in reality, you shouldn't be focusing on their domain of expertise. You should be focusing on yours and leverage their technologies and bring it into your ecosystem and vice versa when you need to. That's the way we innovate. That's what lets us get to speed and scale. And so Cosmos gets it. They're all about that. And so I would think of them as much more like a SDK, a software development kit for blockchains. That's why they call it the internet of blockchains, because one of the cool things about Cosmos is anytime you build if any Cosmos project, this is probably the better way to say it, is automatically, by nature of being Cosmos, interoperable with any other Cosmos project, which is really, really cool. You scroll down and you see the growth is already there, right? There's over 262 apps, services, and other things that's still growing. Uh, it's hard to authenticate all of those. And of course, you know, some may be, you know, a tiny sliver of something, whereas others like Osmosis or Secret Network that run on top of it are much, much bigger. So we know this. You can look at some of these and I actually encourage you to do this. I'm going to do it really quick. I'm just going to hit Explore Tokens. I want you to do this. Take a peek at these and look at all of the different projects, some of which you're going to be like, wait a second, Terra is on here? Both the stablecoin and Terra itself, which is like $51? By the way, I don't know if you guys saw my original Terra video. I have to go back and look and see what it was worth when I first made that video. I loved the idea of what Terra and, and Luna as a project were doing, and <laughs> here we are now, and it's sitting at $51. It's just crazy to me. You see Crypto.com on here. You see a lot of like uh, there's a KuCoin, there's ThorChain, there's, there's Secret, Juno. There's so many of these great projects that are all on here. Acash, many of these that you've probably heard of and quite a few that you probably haven't. So take a peek at those. And this is a great way to find some projects if you're trying to hunt down something that, that's of interest to you. It's already grown to $127 billion market cap. And if we go back and take a look at Cosmos itself, the market cap itself here is only $8 billion. So what does that tell you? Interoperability is king. Right? Like it's great to see it's less about Cosmos and more about what Cosmos is enabling as an entire community. That to me is really, really exciting because it's a foundation from which we can build on top of to do some great and amazing things at a faster speed and scale. Okay, so let's jump back into this a little bit more. So now that you know what, what uh, Cosmos is, you can take a peek at it. And I want you to do that. Um, see all the things that happens inside of it. But one of the things that powers all of it is Atom. Atom is the native token. Atom is what drives it all. And Atom is what brings up a lot of questions that a lot of people have of like, okay, so I see Atom is growing, but if Atom is really, if really Cosmos and Atom, the, the native token itself is just enabling everything else, why do I even need Atom? What's the point of that? And why is it growing? We'll come back to some of those really good questions as we dive a little bit deeper into the video. Just know the future of where Cosmos is going is that Atom as the centralized mechanism in the ecosystem is one of the things that's going to connect us together. It's one of the things that's going to give us the ability to say, Atom is what I can use, I can stake, and I can sort of certify, that's maybe not the right word, but, but incentivize for growth on other projects running on the ecosystem. It's sort of like the centralized reserve currency of the entire ecosystem is probably a good way to think of it. It's probably not the perfectly um, way to say it. But anyway, it's fast, low fees, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so at this point, you're kind of seeing it and you're like, okay, I get it. That's, that's definitely really cool. But what, why is it popular? And what's happening here in 2022 that's making this a project that's continuing to go somewhere? Well, a couple things you can do. One is you need to be aware of the, the roadmap to really understand the answers to that question. So you can see where they've gone. Here's the Delta upgrade, the Vega upgrade, and now we're here in the Theta upgrade. So this is what they're currently working on. And I'm not going to go through every piece of this, and some of it's far more technical than you need to worry about. But you do want to take a look at this and then also seeing what's coming out with the Row upgrade as well. 
Um, but a few different things that are happening here. Um, I'm not, I haven't really used much in Gravity with their uh, decentralized exchange. I'm using Cosmos much more. Um, so I'm going to kind of skip this one. But there's a bunch of upgrades coming out to, um, especially on inter, uh, the interchain uh, accounts. So I'm going to cover that in just a bit. So there's a lot here that's coming out that's really going to bring even deeper interoperability. And so um, what I wanted to do is less cover this page here, although put a link in the description so you can go and read this more and really focus right here on this blog article because this is a fantastic article that's really giving us a lot of data and detail about what's happening in uh, 2022 around Cosmos. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick a couple of these things out. So one is, one of the things they mentioned is interchain security. And this is a big deal, right? This is gonna bring in some capabilities that uh, really need to happen inside Cosmos to drive it to further innovation. So I'm gonna read a couple of things and kind of explain to you what some of these things are, right? So this shared security service, um, this interchain security, it, it allows Cosmos chains to effectively lease security to other chains so that they can bootstrap their economies and validators and delegators and larger chains can earn rewards for their service. What the heck does that mean? Let me kind of simplify this into Wes language, right? The purists may get mad at me because it's not exactly technically correct, but I'm gonna give you a good idea of what this means. So if I'm a new project and I wanna get into the Cosmos ecosystem, I have a problem. The problem is simply this, there's not enough market share to go around. Right, so let's say I, I create a new project and it's worth very, very little because it's brand new, it's burgeoning. Theoretically, couldn't someone come in and because this is a proof of stake, go buy up enough of the tokens that are out there and com like completely wreck my entire uh, platform? Yes, is the answer to that. Now there's a lot of ways we're getting around that right now. A lot of things like community airdropping, intentionally giving a lot of people early access to uh, the, the, the new community, the new platform, the new crypto that I've built. And hopefully that plus the value growing over time makes it difficult, but theoretically it's still possible. And so this idea of interchain security is a little bit different. It's this idea of saying, well, Atom exists and Atom is this huge multi, I think $8 billion market cap we said before, why don't we let Atom holders use their Atom to certify and sort of put their, their influence on the line in return for getting rewards in the new ecosystem. Now the new ecosystem gets benefits as well, because if we do that, if the protocol allows it, then the only way that you could theoretically buy up the entire ecosystem is not just buy up the tiny burgeoning new project I created, but also all of Adam. So now you can have $8 billion, well not 8 billion, but you, about two thirds of that on hand to be able to buy up all of that just to shut my project down. That's not gonna happen. I mean, I'm just telling you, it's not gonna happen. And so what's really cool about interchain security is it's a way of sort of saying, okay, we'll let Adam holders decide to say, you know what, I'm gonna use my Adam and I'm gonna secure that new project so no one's gonna be able to buy it out, but I want my benefits out of that. My benefits are, I want access in your ecosystem. It's kind of like, you know, the whole world of uh, funding. You know, you have an investor give you funds to grow something, they want something in return. They want equity in return. So that's a high level of what the interchain security is all about. I think it's really cool. It's gonna really help make sure that new projects get kicked off. There's no, no malice and uh, malintent that happens behind it. If you want to see more about this, here's an individual article that I'll also link so you can see more on this as well. But it just dives more into how this happens in a very simple and easy uh, to, to, to read kind of way. It, it mentions how all that works with the shared security giving us that capability. So that's the first thing that I wanted to cover is interchain security. Now, the second thing we want to cover, and this goes along kind of with it, is this, this interchain accounts. And what in the heck does that mean, right? So we'll read some of this as well. And then once again, like normal, I'll kind of simplify this for you. So uh, it says, uh, let's see, let's find where we're at here. Um, interchain accounts allow ecosystem chains to securely control accounts on other ecosystem chains, rather than just simply transferring tokens from one to another. And what they do notice in the next paragraph, they actually compare like Ethereum, for example. So Ethereum, because its native capability of smart contracts allow me to create a token on the Ethereum system, I could make one token interact with another. I could make something happen. You do this in Ethereum. It interacts with this other project in Ethereum. One token can impact another token, just as an example. There's all kinds of cool creative things you can do in Ethereum. Cosmos actually, believe it or not, doesn't really have that capability yet, right? So like you read right here, they even show this to you. With IBC, what's coming out in, in all this, with IBC, you can move tokens, inner, inner blockchain communications, whatever it is, um, 
it, it lets you move between networks, right? I can just bring up Kepler and I can move easily from one to another, but I don't have the ability to trigger an action on another chain like I would with smart contracts on Ethereum. And that's a problem, right? I want the ability to have one project in Cosmos be able to affect another project in Cosmos. This is really what allow us to have even more robust capabilities. That does not exist yet today. So this is going to happen. This interchain accounts is going to allow for that capability to happen. And you know they're even showing a DeFi explosion with application specific blockchains. And you might wonder, well, what does that mean? Like, give me practical examples. Well, I don't know yet, right? I'm gonna wait and see what this does. I wouldn't be surprised to see the technology come out. And then it might take us some time to see practical use cases where it happens in everyday uh, use cases for all of us, right? So we just have to be patient with that and see what it does. But I think it's pretty, I think it's a great, it's a needed feature inside Cosmos to continue to bring forward the capabilities um, that we need with interoperability in 2022. So I think that's, that's going to be awesome. Last one I wanted to talk about is liquid staking, right? This sounds kind of cool. What is liquid staking? Let's read about this. I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and uh, here's... So, so the thing to remember, there's going to be two major iterations of this. The first iteration is not going to be super impactful, but it's going to bring capabilities that the second iteration is going to be much more useful for, and I promise you're going to have use cases day one out of this. So let's start here. Version one of liquid staking will allow Atom holders to send transactions that immediately convert their bonded Atom into transferable representations that can be used in liquidity pools and other activities. It opens up a realm of DeFi possibilities, allowing you to maximize your Atom while still earning staking rewards. So it's kind of this idea of doing two things at once, right? I'm holding and I'm staking my Atom, and as I get results from that, I can then use that automatically in liquidity pools. Instead of it being one-to-one, -one, so like the way it works in Osmos right now is I'm staking a bunch of my Osmos and I'm getting rewards for that. And then I'm taking those rewards and I'm funneling them into liquidity pools. Let's take a time out for a second. You may have said, what the heck did you just say, Wes? What are liquidity pools? What are staking? What's Osmos? If all of that was Greek to you, because I promise you, this is like a sort of a newbie's high level view of why Cosmos is going to just go so well in 2022 and why it's blowing up. Just pause for a minute. I will have some content, I promise, coming out around osmosis staking, yield farming, all of that. Just know it's really, really cool stuff. And it's a great way for you to grow crypto investments. We're just going to have to pause on how all that works, right? But, but just know right now that capability doesn't exist. It's one-to-one. -one. I can stake my osmos and I can liquidity pool. I can't do it, both of them at the same time. So that's what's going to happen here with the li uh, liquid staking. That's going to give me the capability of doing both. They go on a little bit more right here. So in version one, let's actually zoom this in. I'm probably hurting so many of your guys' eyes. Sorry about that. Okay. In version one, fluid tokens are bonded to the validator that delegator stakes their atom with, right? So when you bond, um, you're going to pick a validator, you're going to bond with them, and that's how you get your staking done. Um, it says this can be restrictive and not necessarily ideal. And I think the reason they're saying that is because it doesn't give me the capability of doing a lot with it, right? And, and But it, this will make more sense right here. But version two is going to fix that. And here's how it's going to fix it, um, at least in theory, once we see how this whole thing comes out. Yeah, so here it is right here. So they, they mentioned this. The, the creators that are uh, of, of this project that are creating liquid staking have already done this for Ethereum 2.0. And so you can see this. What, what it does through the use of sophisticated smart contracts is it lets you not just stake your Ether, but use it at the same time. So normally in, in most environments, if not all, once you stake, they're locked up. You can't get your funds. You can't use them in any sort of way. The way this works is it lets you have a portion of that that you can actually use it at exactly the same time. And that's, that's super innovative. It gives you the capability to do two things at once, whereas normally that's not possible. So we'll see more about how all this comes out. I, I think liquid staking is a really powerful thing. I'm excited to kind of see what happens out of all of that. Um, and, and I think you'll really see it materialize through platforms like Osmosis, for example. They're going to let you do so much more um, at, at the same time. The, the article also mentioned some additional things, you know, like they say IBC will become an ecosystem of 200 chains. In other words, um, you know, it, a lot of new projects are going to explode in, uh, again, because of the, the capabilities of, of growth and scale and interoperability. It's going to allow for so many more projects to come in. I believe it. Now we're going to see 200. Who's to say, right? And how do we even count that 200? You know, you might say, well, if Polkadot's in and we can use other projects, you know, inside their ecosystem, we're going to count them too. You know, who knows? But 
Uh, I, I will say it's fair to say that there's going to be a lot of growth of new projects coming in in 2022 with Cosmos. That much we know for sure. Uh, they also talk about how DeFi is going to just completely blow up. They mentioned a little bit more about liquid staking on all of that. So yeah, here it is right here. So I knew that there was somewhere else they mentioned this, right? So um, Osmosis is going to be releasing their own version of that liquid staking, right? It's called Superfluid Staking. And I'll cover this more when I when I when you know, when we see more of this materialize and show you how it works inside of Osmosis. Uh, but again, doing two things at the same time, right? It allows holders to use their tokens for staking and liquidity providing at the same time, as well as ensuring governance serves our, all of our, our interests. So that's pretty awesome, right? It's good to see all those things. And then the last thing they mentioned as well is NFTs are going to become huge. I'm just going to skip this all together. Other than I will say, take a look at all of the projects that are NFT focused here and not all of them around, you know, the, the typical stupid metaverse and um, you know, all the other like art stuff that is hard for a lot of people to really conceptualize why NFTs are worth so much. So take a look at some of these projects and see what you think about it. Um, and then, of course, more on airdrops. And I'm skipping airdrops today. I told you I'd just tell you a piece of it. Airdrops are just a creative way to release liquidity from a new project into the ecosystem. And I will say this just at a high level. Airdrops are much more fair, much more balanced and much more ethical than ICOs. And so I'm glad to see us go from this iteration of like early mining into ICOs, now into airdrops that I think bring a more fair and robust ecosystem into how we introduce liquidity of a new project into, into the world. And so I'll just kind of pause it there and say, I'll cover more about how airdrops work. If you guys want me to just leave comments down below and say, Wes, I want to know more about how all this works. I don't know much about airdrops. How do I get into them? How do I see them? How do I make sure I get in on all that goodness? Let me know and I'll, I'll produce a video on that as well. But uh, I do think airdrops are the right way to go. So, so there you have it. Those are some of the big things that are coming inside of the world of Cosmos for 2022 that I think are really big deals, right? Especially on the security side of the house, the interchain accounts, the interchain security that allow us to have interoperability with new things that allow us to bootstrap projects using Atom itself. And it really gives more value to Atom as a whole anyway, right? There's actual value to holding Atom and staking it because it lets you get in on new projects as well. Um, in addition to airdrops. I, I just think that's awesome. I love where that's going. And of course, liquidity and what we're seeing inside of liquid staking, um, I think is, is really powerful as well. So there you have it. That's kind of a high level view of some of the big things that are happening in 2022 with Cosmos that I think you need to, ha you need to be paying attention to. If Cosmos is not in your investment profile, I'm not, look, I'm not your financial advisor. I'm just a YouTuber. And so if you listen to me and do what I tell you, you're gonna go broke. So I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I'm going to tell you the facts about why Cosmos is a super cool project, why it's already number 20 and it's growing quickly, why it's really hedged itself well against what's happening in this entire crypto economy as a whole of last few months, and why I think it's a project that I think anybody from at least a technological perspective needs to pay attention to because I love where it's going and interoperability is key. There you have it, my friends. That's what I know about Cosmos. I'd love to know what you think about this. I'd love to know why you're interested in it. I'd love to know if you want me to dive in more. Maybe I need to get even more simple or maybe I need to get more technical for you guys. Just let me know what you think. I'd love to cover more on this at any point in time. Thank you guys so very much.